Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at Fedora Linux. This is codenamed the 38. Uh, also, it is version 38, so not a very clever one, but it nonetheless, is, it'll work. So Fedora Linux includes a number of distributions that they call spins. There's some uh, dedicated editions like Fedora Server, Fedora, Fedora IoT, CoreOS, Silverblue, Kinolite Labs, and soon they're adding another one called Fedora Cloud. You also have spins that for that address each of the window managers and desktop environments that Fedora supports. So to learn more about those, you can go to the Fedora documentation website and read about them. But Fedora Linux supports hardware architectures such as the Intel AMD x86-64, also ARM ARCH-64, which is the 64-bit version of the ARM architecture. They also support PowerPC, specifically the PPC-64LE, and uh, IBM S390X platforms, the Z13 and up. Fedora Linux is provided on four different media types. The first one is a live image, and that's where you can test things out without having to actually install anything on your machine. And then if you find that you like it and you want to use it, you, there is an option there for you to install it directly to your drive. There's also standard images. Those are traditional Fedora Linux installations on hardware or virtual machines. And those standard images can be deployed. You can put them on like a CD-ROM, a DVD, USB stick, whatever. The other one is the net install image. That's an everything list of uh, all, all of the spins, all of the desktop environments, all of the window managers. Uh, and so you can, you can just download the net install. The net install ISO is very small, though. It only has enough on it to be able to do the installation and to download the packages you need, the internet-based repo. So the other one is there's a file system disk image that has pre-installed Fedora Linux to get you up and running as soon as possible on single board computers like the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and there are also others uh, that you can use as well for virtual machines. But Fedora Linux will automatically update your system to the latest version of Fedora, and that'll happen the next time you run a DNF upgrade. Of course, it's not going to choose the beta and install that, so you don't have to worry about that. You can even reuse existing partitions without having to destroy and recreate them. Typically, what that means is that you would have a partition for your home directory. System requirements, what do we need for that, for this? I don't have the ones yet, won't get those until tomorrow, uh, the uh, 18th of April, when this is officially released. But Fedora Workstation minimums that I have are the ones for 37, but I will talk about my observations after installing it. 37 recommended a dual core 2 gigahertz or better CPU with 2 gigabytes of memory, 20 gigabytes of disk space, and a 1024 by 768 display. I don't know, maybe the dual core is fine. It depends on your workload. I mean, programs don't get smaller over time, they get bigger. As far as the 2 gigabyte of memory, I don't think that's enough. I mean, the base install of GNOME starts coming up at 1.4 gigabytes of memory. And the budgie that I tested was upwards of around 1.6 to 1.7 gigabytes of memory. So yeah, that's just not enough headroom to be able to do too much. So 4 gig would be the minimum and probably 8 would be a recommended. As far as the disk space, it takes about 5.8 and Budgie will have to look at when we're do, looking at the install for that or how much it takes. And then the 1024, uh-uh. No, it defaults to 1280 now. So you'll need, uh, yeah, you'll you'll need 720p. What about the recommended? Well, again, two, four, the quad core I think is a wise choice. Four gig, possibly you could get away with that. Depends on what you're doing. But yeah, you, you may have to jump it to 8 gig in order to be able to use 
uh, have enough memory left to do what you want. 20 gig of disk space is probably enough to start with. Same thing anyway with the, uh, the, the screen resolution 1280 or 720p is what you're going to need. Linux kernel 6.2 is the default kernel for Fedora. It seems like every, every release of the kernel they're working on ButterFS, uh, RAID 5 and 6. There are some performance improvements that were made to that particular variant of ButterFS. However, I still don't see a note on it that says this is safe for production workloads just yet. There's also a better control of block devices. That specifically is the write back. There's added support for a proactive TCP. That's the proactive load balancing mechanism. That's probably not going to benefit you a whole lot in a home environment. Uh, typically, you see PLB in uh, data center class switches, and uh, yeah, I've only seen it in one home switch, and I haven't seen it since. Uh, there's also improved Rust support that, that offers uh, in Rust additional string formatting. There's also better error reporting and printing, memory allocation, and macros, and there's a whole bunch more. You can read the release notes on it. But what about the workstation itself? What kind of changes can we expect to see there? Well, the first thing you're going to notice is if you shut down your machine, it doesn't take as long to do it because they have shortened the shutdown timer. Um, also, if you're attempting to uh, connect older style hardware, and that would be hardware from about 30 years ago, X server and X Whalen will no longer allow clients with big Indianness. That has to do with byte order and architecture. Now, uh, Intel, ARM, and RISC V are all little Indianness. So there's also stricter SSH host key permissions uh, that are default for your private keys. They no longer allow group readable permissions on those keys. So it's only the user permissions that's a, that uh, they set. RPM is now using Sequoia-based uh, Open uh, OpenPGP parser, and that's instead of the original one. The original parser for RPM was flawed. It had a lot of limitations, so good riddance. PCree deprecation. If you have versions of PCree that are older than version 2, those are deprecated. Those will be retired and removed from Fedora in a later release. The Z13 is the baseline for the IBM Z hardware. Other changes is the unfiltered flat hubs. You now can connect to third-party flat hubs. Before, you couldn't do that. Uh, that means that you can install flat packs from external uh, organizations or people. So because of that, I would recommend using that with care. Make sure that you know the organization or the person that you're connecting to. Otherwise, you could be installing malware on your machine. Fedora now offers an official Budgie spin, and that uses the latest shipping version of Budgie's desktop environment. Also, they offer Fedora Sway spin, and that's created to support the Sway uh, window manager. And that's new. I don't think I remember seeing that before. So Wayland now is the default for SDDM. So if you're wondering about that, Wayland continues to take more and more responsibility for uh, managing uh, your GUI. Before we go look at the benchmarks, I'm going to give you a couple of hints on it of what I observed with it. So the first thing and the biggest glaring thing with Fedora is ButterFS. Using that, as your root partition is two to three times slower than any other Linux out there. And, and what do I mean by two to three times slower? There is a gap of 105,000 IOPS between what Butter, the performance of ButterFS on the root file system and the ones that are deployed by even RHEL. The next thing area that I would talk about is I think that Overall, Fedora has a very good release here. I mean, it it's not it Fedora on is always kind of a, a playground for new things to determine whether or not these packages uh, that they're adding in or experimenting with should be moved on into CentOS streams. 
and then from there moved on in to REL at some point. But uh, and that's where it, that is its purpose is to see how it's going to play out over time. And uh, I think it does a great job at that. I th I think it's a it's a great platform to go and experiment and play around with new ideas. Absolutely. The uh, let's go take a look at the benchmarks. And uh, before we go, thank you for watching today. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please share it. Please share it with your friends. Hope to see you all again real soon. Bye for now.